Understanding scale when working with maps is important because all data represents a modeled reality of the Earth. It's not possible to put all of the information we find in the real world onto a map, so we have to make compromises. Scale is one of those compromises. Scale lets the user understand the degree to which geographic information has been simplified on a map. You may have noticed the effect of scale on what features are shown when you zoom in on an online map like Google Maps. Map scale is typically described in two different ways. There are large scale maps and there are small scale maps. Large scale maps show a smaller geographic area, but typically contain a higher or larger amount of detail. Small scale maps tend to show a larger geographic area, but contain less detail or a smaller amount of detail. One way to understand the scale of a map is to look for the scale representation on the map. Scale is a ratio of what distance on the map represents the distance in the real world. There are three main ways that scale might be shown on a map. There's a graphic or bar scale, a verbal scale, or a representative fraction. Bar graphs are a way to visually represent scale. Essentially, bar graphs serve as a ruler that shows how the distance on a map represents the distance on the ground. Verbal scales use a ratio of one type of unit on the map to indicate the distance that that unit represents on the ground. For example, one inch equals 100 feet. This means that one inch on the map represents 100 feet on the ground. Representative fractions is similar to verbal scales, but is independent of any specific type of measurement unit. For example, you may see a 1 to 100 ratio. This means that the unit on each side of the colon is the same. Therefore, in this example of 1 to 100, it could mean 1 inch equals 100 inches on the ground. The same map holds true for 1 centimeter on the map is equal to 100 centimeters on the ground. The type of unit doesn't matter. The larger the number that the map distance represents on the scale indicator, the smaller the scale of the map. This can be confusing to many, but think of it in this way. The small in small scale refers to the small amount of detail represented on the map. So why is scale important? Well, here's one hypothetical. A geography professor asked three students to find geographic data and measure the coastline of Britain. Student A comes back with 2,400 kilometers. Student B comes back with 2,800 kilometers. And student C comes back with 3,400 kilometers. Which student got it right? Well, actually, the professor says, all the students are correct. So how can this be? This problem is known as the coastline paradox. Remember that smaller scale maps compromise showing a greater area by simplifying the geography. As you have learned, large scale maps contain more detail than small scale maps. This figure shows an underlying map of a highly detailed British coastline. The orange line on top shows how the coastline is drawn based on the scale of the data. The map on the far left is a small scale map, and the orange boundary is very generalized or simplified. The map on the far right represents the largest scale and contains a far greater amount of detail in the nooks and crannies of the coastline. If you were to straighten out the coastline, all of those nooks and crannies add a great deal of length to the total. So this has been a quick presentation on understanding map scale. The key points to remember are that maps are a representation of reality. And map scale affects how accurate that representation is. Large scale maps show a smaller area with more detail and tend to be more accurate. Small scale maps show a larger area, less detail, and tend to be less accurate. 